Good happy Friday evening. I'm Riley King and welcome to your news and weather update right here on the Riley King Radio Network. It is 2.50 p.m. right now. Let's get started with your first round of your news and weather update. First up, ex-police officer accused of stealing truck from Manchester dealer arrested. Let's take a listen to the video from WMUR News 9. Well, Tom Derek Guthrow worked for the Melrose Police Department from 1996 until 2007, but was fired from his job. Now, it was actually his co-workers who saw the surveillance footage from this dealership here behind me, contacted New Hampshire authorities, which then led to his arrest. Absolutely, really. You've got the truck back. No harm, no harm to the truck at all. So that's a that's a plus as well. A big sigh of relief being felt here at the T Nissan of Manchester dealership after getting one of their used vehicles back. It was on Monday when police say this man, Derek Guthrow of Nashua, walked into the dealership to check out a 2011 Chevy Silverado. Guthrow, who was posing under the name of Adam Foley, they say, then asked to take the truck to show his wife, but he never came back. The salesman asked for an ID, but Guthrow said he did not have it. Instead, telling the salesman he was a state trooper, showing a badge and leaving a false number according to police. The dealership then turned to the public for help by releasing this surveillance video. Everybody was giving us leads, giving us some information, um, and eventually led to the guy's arrest. So. Authorities say Guthrow is a former Melrose, Massachusetts police officer who worked there until 2007. Former co-workers saw the dealership's surveillance video and contacted police who were able to track the 46-year-old to this home on Concord Street in Nashua. When WMUR showed up for comment, we were told Guthrow was not home. The truck was discovered in the parking lot of this margarita's restaurant located just down the street. Guberino says although the dealership is happy to have the truck back, they're glad police say they've solved the crime. No worries now with him being out there, so we were, uh, that, that was our biggest concern, getting him off the streets because, you know, impersonating cop is a, is a big, is a big issue. And now Guthrow is out on $5,000 personal recognizance. He is expected to be due back in court on January 20th. Live here in Manchester, I'm Tim Callery, WMUR News 9. Okay, and there you go on that report. Canterbury Stewart offers reward for arrest of man and attempted robbery. Let's take a listen to this video is from time is WMUR News 9. Make such cheer. If yours is the drum, go out and have fun. But first, make sure your research is done. Know before you fly. Fly below 400 feet and always keep the drum within sight. Stay away from airports and emergency scenes. And always yield to manned aircraft like doubt. Know before you fly and enjoy the friendly sky. Yeah, Shelly, this is a very busy time of year for the smokehouse. That manager who was attacked by the suspect is working late tonight finishing Christmas orders. Check out this video. Surveillance captured the whole thing on Monday night. The store says the suspect wearing a ski mask forced his way in with a crowbar. He starts filling a ski bag with two ducks and a ham steak and is then confronted by the manager. The suspect then punches him. They get into a shoving match and other employees jump in. As the suspect was trying to take off, look at this, workers ripped his shirt off and then he falls down as he runs away. The manager says adrenaline kicked in. He wanted to protect this family-run business. My daughter's yelling to let him go. She wanted him out of the building as quick as possible and I didn't. I wanted a, I, that's all I wanted was the ski mask off. As you can see, there's enough cameras there. That's all I had to do was get it off and then he can go. Well, tonight the store is offering a $500 reward for information that leads to an arrest and conviction. Anyone with information is asked to call police. Reporting live in Canterbury, Mike Cronin, WMUR News 9. Okay, and there you go on that report. Dover Police investigating possible 12th overdose of 2016 after death of 30-year-old man. Dover officials are investigating the death of a 30-year-old 
man who was found unresponsive at his home on Wednesday. Dover Police and Dover Fire Rescue responded to the residents at 71 Portland Avenue after John Vary of Dover was found unresponsive. Vary was pronounced dead at the scene. While the cause and manner of Vary's death will be determined by the office and chief medical examiner, at this time it appears to be an overdose, according to police. Police suspect that this is the 12th overdose-related death in Dover in 2016, although toxicology tests are still pending in some cases. All are expected to be opiate-related. The Dover Police Department has responded to 59 non-fatal drug overdose in 2016. This case is being investigated by the Dover Police Department's Special Investigation Bureau. Anyone with information about the incident is asked to call Dover Police Department at 603-742-4646. Anonymous tips may be called into the Dover Crime Line at 603-749-6000. The Dover Crime Line can also be contacted via www.dovercrimeline.org. Confusion grows over Trump's nuclear plan after possible hint of arms race. Let's take a listen to the video from ABC News. is broken. The spell is broken. You can't tell the orchestra that they're your family and then just leave them. You really do want to conduct. Can you help me? What are we now? They keep us waiting, losing our minds. We're all crazy. Are you ready for the change of silence? I think they're ready to help me. Could this single tweet from Donald Trump mark a major break from U.S. policy for nearly 40 years? A tweet that read in part, the U.S. must greatly strengthen and expand its nuclear capability. There was all kind of warnings, especially from Hillary Clinton, that when she said, if a guy that you could bait with a tweet is not somebody you want put in charge of the nuclear arsenal. So one and one day in one moment, he combined that message. The timing of the tweet also triggering concerns, posted just hours after Russian President Vladimir Putin said, we need to strengthen the military potential of strategic nuclear forces. This morning, Putin responded he saw nothing unusual about Trump's pledge. Trump's team, meanwhile, announcing new names to his White House communication team, including adding veteran Republican operative Sean Spicer as White House press secretary. Also in the news, Ivanka Trump expected to play a key role in her father's administration. Some guy went up to her and started uh, giving her a hard time. A passenger reportedly upset started yelling at Ivanka and her family on a JetBlue flight on their way to Hawaii for vacation. The Secret Service did not intervene, but the flight crew eventually removed the man from the flight. And as for Trump's tweet here, a response today from the newly announced press secretary, Sean Spicer, who told media outlets that this was a response to a lot of countries, Russia, China, and others, that if they increase their nuclear capability, America will act. Elizabeth Herr, ABC News, New York. Okay, and there you go on that report. Carrie Fisher hospitalized in Los Angeles after flight. Let's take a listen to this video from ABC News. We also come to give them back, to help those in need. Can't beat the brands, the styles, and when we donate a coat at Burlington, we get 10% off our entire purchase. Burlington's been collecting coats for 10 years. Bring we experienced our first Northeast winter. <laughs> we were freezing. So we went to Burlington. There's so many brands to choose from. That looks good on you. We found something for everybody. And the prices are great. This year, a serious medical emergency in the sky for Star Wars actress Carrie Fisher. You know, the 935 heavy, I need the nature of the medical emergency. 
While on a United Airlines flight from London to Los Angeles Friday, Fisher suffering cardiac arrest. We have some uh, passengers, nurses assisting the passenger. We have an unresponsive passenger. So they're working on it right now. A fellow passenger, actress Anna Ekana, tweeted, Don't know how else to process this, but Carrie Fisher stopped breathing on the flight home. Hope she's going to be okay. By 12.15, the L.A. Fire Department performed CPR on her and transported her to a local hospital. Darth Vader, only you could be so bold. Fisher is best known for playing Princess Leia in the Star Wars trilogy, a role she reprised in last year's new installment, The Force Awakens. Her Star Wars co-star Mark Hamill tweeting tonight as if 2016 couldn't get any worse, sending all our love to Carrie Fisher. Lauren Lister, ABC News, Los Angeles. Okay, and there you go on that report. Stocks close flat as Dow fails to reach 20,000 ahead of Christmas. U.S. equalities closed mostly flat on Friday ahead of the Christmas holiday as the Dow Jones Industrial Average failed again to reach the physicology important level of 20,000. U.S. defeats Israel. Let's take a listen to this video from CNN. We're wired differently. That means incredibly fast 150 meg internet for the holidays. So in the 3.7 seconds it takes Gary Watson to beat the local sled jump record, Hi, Gary. his friend can download 13 versions of the perfect song. His sister can live stream it, while his mom downloads how to set a dislocated shoulder. Get 150 meg internet, TV, and phone for just $79.99 per month online for the first year. Cable can't offer that. Only files can. In total defiance of Israel, the incoming president, and even members of his own party, President Obama refused to veto a U.N. resolution condemning Israeli settlements, allowing it to pass the Security Council resoundingly, a rare abandonment of a long-held U.S. tenant to have Israel's back at the U.N. It is because this resolution reflects the facts on the ground and is consistent with U.S. policy across Republican and D Democratic administrations throughout the history of the state of Israel that the United States did not veto it. President Obama has long held the settlements were an obstacle to peace, a huge source of conflict with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Israel's UN ambassador said in a statement he had expected his country's, quote, greatest ally to act in accordance with the values that we share and that they would have vetoed this disgraceful resolution. The vote brings to a head a standoff between the current and future U.S. presidents over Mideast peace. And Israel's representative at the U.N. said he hopes the Trump administration will be more sympathetic. Trump himself tweeted tersely, as to the U.N., things will be different after January 20th. The vote was initially delayed Thursday after a diplomatic scramble by Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, who reached out to President-elect Trump to intervene. When Trump sent out a statement calling for a U.S. veto, Egyptian President Sisi, whose country sponsored the resolution, put the vote on hold. And it wasn't President Obama he called to discuss the future of Mideast peace, but the president-elect. Behind the scenes, U.S. officials are grumbling that Trump's interference runs afoul of an unspoken custom, that there could only be one commander-in-chief at a time. But publicly, the State Department appeared unfazed. Nobody here felt boxed in by uh, a tweet from the president-elect, and he's perfectly entitled to express his views on these kinds of things. It's hard to know to what extent Trump's involvement affected the outcome, but his spokesman made clear this president-elect won't be staying on the sidelines until he takes office next month. President Obama and his team have been unbelievably gracious to the president-elect and his team, but at the end of the day, he's not someone that's going to sit back and wait. Okay, and there you go on that report. And now time for your weather. Your weather for tonight, partly cloudy early, followed by cloudy skies overnight, low 29 degrees, winds light and variable. And that does it for your news and weather update. It is 3.59 right now. Sorry about that. 
2.59 right now. It's almost 3 p.m. And your 3 p.m. radio program is coming up next.